Good morning, friends and members of Casa Emanuel United Methodist Church. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I invite you to stay with us for our worship this morning.
us from Psalm 66, verses 8 to 20. Hear the word of God. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me.
in a prayer of confession. Lord of mercy, there are so many times in our lives when we feel alone, we wonder where you are. We cry out to you in our confusion, pain, and hurt. And we do not immediately grant the prayers of our cries. We begin to doubt that you even care or exist. Stop us from going down this path of self-destruction. Help us look around and find the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. Forgive us when we are so quick to doubt and so arrogant in our demands of your responses. Give us the spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministries of love and hope that you have placed before us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us hear words of assurance. Even in the midst of doubt and darkness, the light of God is shining in you, on you, and through you. Out of God's great love, you have been redeemed and made whole. Rejoice, beloved of God. Amen. Our anthem this morning is called Knowing You by Brandon.
We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for you have been our provider. Surely you have been our provider during this time of crisis, and for that we give you thanks. We also remember those without employment, those that may be in need because of the crisis that we're going through. And so we pray for your help. Okay. Now. When Jesus uh, knew that he was going to go away, he talked to his disciples. And even though he knew he was coming back, Jesus knew that he was going to leave all of the people that he loved alone. And when we're alone, it makes us feel scared and afraid. And we want to be comforted. And what comfort is, is comfort makes you feel warm and safe and not afraid. So I have here some things that make me comfortable. I have a fuzzy blanket that I like to sleep with when I'm not feeling well. I have a, a stuffed animal that sometimes I sleep with. And I also sometimes like to read my favorite stories from the Bible. They give me comfort. Well, Jesus was like a good parent because he knew that he was leaving. And when your parents leave for a while, they usually leave you with your aunt or your uncle or your grandparents or babysitter so that you're not alone. And Jesus wanted the disciples to know that he wasn't leaving them alone either. He was leaving them the Holy Spirit. And one of the names for the Holy Spirit is the Comforter because Jesus meant that the Holy Spirit would be a comfort to everyone on earth that they knew that until Jesus came back that they weren't left alone and they didn't need to be afraid. Let us pray. Gentle Jesus, thank you for leaving us, loving us so much that you didn't leave us alone and that you sent us, the Holy Spirit, to be our guide and our comforter until you return. Amen. A blessing on that. This morning we come to you, Lord, also with gifts of love and thanksgiving. We bring these offerings to you as a token of love, and we pray that you will bless them to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
we continue to pray for Bob and Shirley Cooper and for their son. We also continue praying for all the essential workers, for all those that are out there in the fields working for us. We also pray for those that have been contaminated with the coronavirus. This week, I learned of a relative that died last Sunday after being in the hospital for 10 days with the coronavirus. We continue to pray for Christian Mireles, and we also continue to pray for Esmeralda Chavez. We don't have a word yet about how they're doing. We will also pray this morning for Sherry Nelson's daughter, Julie, and her father, Charles, which has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Would you please pray with me? We come to you, O God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Helper, our Savior, our Friend, our Healer. God, you have heard the names of those that we love. You have heard about their needs. And so we pray that you will extend your healing hand on their favor and heal them, Lord. We also know of the many, many friends and family relatives who have not shared their concerns, their pain with us, but you know it. And so we pray, O oh Lord, also for your blessing upon them. Heal our wounds this morning, O oh Lord. Heal our sicknesses and give us hope and life. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now join in our Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy the kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, 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 earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our debts, as, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the power, and the, power, and the glory forever. Amen. are in me 
and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and give them loves me. Whoever loves me and will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Sunday, there can be a better word from God to us than to hear about the promise of the Holy Spirit. The one person of the Holy Trinity who is going to come after Jesus and be our helper, be our help, be our master and our savior. And so according to the Gospel of John, as we read, this conversation of Jesus with his disciples actually started in chapter 13, verses 34, during the last supper of Jesus and his disciples. Here we find Jesus teaching his disciples about the importance of loving one another just as same as Jesus loved them. But in this conversation, Jesus changes the sub subject to be loved, which was the second person then, for the first person, which is him, Jesus. And so Jesus introduces two new ideas in this conversation. The first idea is that Jesus said, if you love me, then you must keep my commandments. And so in this concept, Jesus connects love and obedience to him. In this scripture, Jesus ties love and obedience. Our obedience is always it's the main sign of our love to God. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. We cannot claim that we love God, that we love Jesus, if we don't obey His commandments. And so in this gospel, faithfulness to Jesus' word is a defining mark of our discipleship, our call. And then, for Jesus, the second idea, the second concept, is that if they, meaning the disciples, obey His commandments, Jesus will pray to His Father, and He will give them another counselor that will be with them forever. You know, during this critical conversation of Jesus with His disciples, Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure with his Father to heaven. If we look carefully to chapters 13 and 14 of John, we will find that Jesus was giving disciples three new commandments. In the first commandment, Jesus said to his disciples, if I, the Lord and Fisher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do this as I have done it for you. Then the second commandment, in the second commandment, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you, then you also love one another. Then in the last commandment, Jesus said to his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I don't think this is a better, a perfect time to love Jesus and not to be troubled that in these days with the coronavirus. 
We need the peace of God. The peace that underpasses all human understanding. But now, the truth of the matter in all these three passages is that Jesus' commitment requires us to allow Him to reshape our lives as we continue to live under His authority. And so while living under Jesus' expectations, Jesus will pray to the Father and He will give us another counselor that He may be with us forever. We will not be left alone. God will be with us through the Holy Spirit. Now, I guess we all know that when it comes to speaking about the Holy Spirit, for us Christians, this is a clear confirmation about our being children of God through repentance, baptism, and by water and spirit. And the Father confirms the identity of Jesus Christ as the Messiah sent by the Father, and the Holy Spirit, likewise, confirms our identity as children of God. How do we know this? Well, in his letter to the church in Rome, Apostle Paul wrote that the same Spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. For others, however, speaking about the Holy Spirit creates, you know, a wide range of misunderstandings wrong interpretation, and also fear, confusion. So maybe we should begin by establishing who the Holy Spirit is, so that we may have a better understanding of the work that He'll be doing in the beginning, but also in the end, in our time. And so we can say clearly that the Holy Spirit is a part of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they all three are made of one same substance. I think this is called in Greek, homoousia. And so according to Acts 1, verses 4 through 5, the coming of the Holy Spirit was promised by the Father, and so Jesus commands his disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait, wait until the Father's promise is fulfilled. And so in the gospel reading for this morning, Jesus' words echo the demands of the Deuteronomic covenant between God and the people of Israel. We know that for the Israelites, the heart of the covenant was, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love Him and give His commandments to a thousand generations. And so, all throughout human history, both in the Old and New Testaments, God has been a God of covenants, offering to humankind unconditional love, free grace, salvation, healing, restoration, and above all, the power to defeat the power of death, and sin. And the only thing that God asks us is that we love Him and that we give the covenant we make with Him. That's exactly what John heard Him say to His disciples. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Then in return, God promised to give them an advocate, a helper who will be with them forever. 
Jesus promised his disciples that he will not leave them orphans. Jesus was not going to continue being physically present with his disciples. However, should he continue being physically present, Jesus' presence would have been tied up and limited by time and space. Right? And so now Jesus was going to continue being with them in spirit to the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so for the church in the New Testament, our time and their time, the role of the Holy Spirit was also to identify those who belong to Christ. Again, in Romans 8, 9, Apostle Paul said, Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And so it is clear that the Holy Spirit plays a major role in the lives of all Christians, both in the Old and the New Testament. Jesus knew well the disciples will not be able to make, to fulfill on the road the task of going into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's why he will send them the Holy Spirit. Now, for those brothers and sisters, Jewish and Gentiles converted to Christianity, things were not easy. Because we know that the majority of them ended up in Roman circus, in the Roman circus, and the gallows burned alive as human torches, or they were eaten alive by hungry lions. However, they were able to do that not in their own human power, but only under the power of the Holy Spirit. We know by history that when they gather them around to be burned, they will be singing to the Lord and God. So maybe the question for members of the church in the 21st century, our question may be, what does all of this mean for us? So let's now see what the role of the Holy Spirit plays in the life of a 21st century Christianity. So number one, we know that the Holy Spirit is our paraclet, our helper in our weak areas. In other words, the things that we cannot do in our weakness, God will do it for us. He helps us to do the things which we cannot do in our own human strength and wisdom. The Holy Spirit is here to help strengthen and nurture us. Hear the words of Prophet Isaiah speaking about the new thing God was ready to do for his people. God said, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Don't you see it? And so I truly believe that God is ready to do something new in this age, in this need, in this crisis that we're going through. The Holy Spirit describes the Bible as a power at work in the lives of people, dealing with us and revealing more fully God and His will for us. You know, I believe that I can say without fear of being wrong that this coronavirus has already left us with a sense of terror, frustration, uneasiness, and insecurity and fear. 
It has left us with the great sense of death and devastation. It has left us with many questions, such as, when will all this be finished? And what would be the final results in human losses? Also, what will the economy and the world going to look like after all this is over? When, one of the questions that we are keep entertaining is when are we going to be able to come back to our building to worship God? Sorry, brothers and sisters, but the answer is we don't know yet. But I think that the biggest question may be, why? Why has God allowed so much devastation in our world? Is God punishing humanity? Of course not. I firmly believe that with the help of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can own the words of Apostle Paul and say along with him, Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will be separated by trouble or distress or by famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, We are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in all these things, we win a sweeping victory through Jesus Christ. And so we know that in Christ our Lord, not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers, or highs or death or any other thing that is created and will separate us from God. Not even the COVID-19 because even though Jesus is no longer physically present with us, however, we can do all things in Jesus Christ who strengthened us to the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And now let us join in singing our closing hymn, number 465 in the United Methodist Symbol, Holy Spirit, Truth to God.
people of God, we know by fact that there has been other pandemics before in the world, and the world survived. And so, with God's help, we're going to survive because God is with us. And so let us go out into the world and share with the world that God is with us through the Holy Spirit. Go in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.